Okay, so this is the first session in the series of workshops that I'll be giving on um, building a successful online and hybrid course. Uh, this is presented by the Brown Center. I'm Bill Sauce. I am the uh, Brown Center Fellow for Remote and Digital Learning. And uh, what I'm going to do in these workshops is I'm going to uh, walk you through um, how I will how I build my courses um, when teaching uh, online. And um, some of what I'll be talking about also will apply to your hybrid courses as well. And I'm not this is not to say that this is the perfect way of doing things. Um, depending on how you teach your course, not everything that I do is going to work for your course. Um, but I'm hoping that it will help some of you uh, be able to prepare uh, for your hybrid courses, maybe learn some things you didn't know about, and maybe even contribute to uh, building my course as well and making suggestions that maybe work for you that I'm not aware of. So I'm going to go ahead and, and share the screen. And OK. Yeah, and you're going to see a little bit of this infinity effect here until I switch over to my Blackboard tab. Okay, now again, I, I call this um, building a successful online or hybrid course. The way I measure success, at least with my courses, is the feedback I get from the students. So basically the course evaluations, uh, especially last semester when we went online, um, halfway through the semester. And the way that I build my courses, whether it's online or even on campus, I do it very, very much the same way, uh, which really helped last semester when we had to switch to online pretty rapidly. Um, there wasn't much change I had to do for my course. And the reason is because I teach my courses both during the summer online and during the spring and fall semesters on campus. So I try to make them as similar as possible to avoid um, more prep work uh, before each semester. So, um, so these are the courses I'm teaching in the fall up here. And by the way, if you have any questions, go ahead and you can use the chat window here. And I don't know if I'll address them as I'm speaking, but definitely when I'm done, we'll go back and, and address all your questions or, or even suggestions. Okay. OK, so these are the courses I'm teaching in the fall. And like many of you, right, we saw this. I saw this on the list serve. Everyone's complaining, well, I have multiple courses of the same class. And the reason is because, as IT explained, when Registrar went in and updated all of our courses to either online or hybrid, it kept the original course. So you'll see I have right my original sections as well as my online sections. The online ones are the ones I'm going to be working with because those are the ones I'm going to be using um, in the fall. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build um, my programming for analytics course, this one here, which is online, OK, for the fall. Now, I haven't done anything with it yet. Um, and the way I'm going to start it is I'm actually going to copy over my course in the summer. Okay, and I always copy over from the previous semester because, right, there are some changes that sometimes you make over time. So I go to the most recent ones so as all my most recent changes. Before I do that, I'm just going to click in here, though. And one of the things I mentioned in my outline when I sent it to everyone is I'm going to show how you can make modifications to the ULIT uh, template that they provide in our course shells only to find out that they no longer provide that. So this is your standard Blackboard shell. And I'm not sure why they stopped giving us that template. Um, but they did say, because I did inquire, and they said, well, we can give it to you, but you have to request it now. So it's not here. So any of your courses, unless you request it, it's just going to have these options here, which is your basic Blackboard shell, OK? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my summer class. And this is where I'm actually using that template. Um, 
And what they suggest you do is have a, a like a welcome screen talking about the course um, and, and yourself. I put a picture up there. Sometimes they should suggest doing a welcome video. I don't do a video only because my online classes are synchronous. So I meet with the students every day anyway, and I record it. So they're going to see enough of me and I give my little introduction on the class. So I just put a picture up there just to make it more personable. And on my welcome screen, I also have a little blurb about the Collaborate Ultra tool, uh, letting the students know this is what we're going to be using. So when they log in, they see this is how I'm going to be. And I also send this out in an email before. But uh, when they log into the course, they say, OK, we're going to be using Collaborate Ultra. And uh, this is how you can access it. I say it's accessible from the course link on the left side panel. So they come over here and they click on Collaborate Ultra, and then it will show them the class that they need to enter. Okay, and then I also put uh, my syllabus on here as well. Uh, if you want, of course, you can put the course materials here. You, some folks like to put a course schedule, but since I have all of that in the syllabus, I just put a link to the syllabus and they can open and see all of that. Okay. And I have a few other links, and I'll go over during the during the different workshops what these links are. Um, but as we come down here, you see I do um, separate the materials out week by week. And I do this not only in the summer online, but also in the spring and the fall uh, on campus as well. And the summer only has eight weeks, right, where spring and fall usually have 16, and I think this time we have 15. So. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this over to my fall class. Okay. So right now, as I showed you before, my fall course shell has nothing in it except for the default Blackboard options. And I want to copy all this over to that. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to the package and utilities option. It's way down here. So this is kind of hidden, but this is how we do it. So we go to package and utilities. Uh, course copy, okay, and then we put the destination course ID. So you have to start with the course that you're copying from, okay. So this is the course I'm copying from, and then the destination course ID is the course I'm going to copy to. So I'm going to browse to find it, and you can see there's a lot of courses here because it has every course you ever taught. Um, but the way, the best way to find your course, at least the way I do it is I search by the, I guess you, I call it the semester code, right? It's this number right here. So the semester code for the fall is 2021-15. Uh, and I do a search. Okay, and then here's all. Now again, I have a lot of duplicates because of the issue that everyone's having uh, with the new uh, formats. Uh, but I know the one that I want to copy to is uh, programming for analytics, the online version here. So I'm going to click on that and click submit. Okay. And then down here is everything that I want to copy to it. Okay. So you can copy the entire course by clicking on this checkbox up here, but I don't want to copy everything um, right now. I just want to copy the course introduction. And that was the page that I just showed you. I want to copy my MindTap link, and the MindTap is the learning management system that I use that I integrate into Blackboard, and this is what I'm really going to focus on mostly today. Um, I guess I'll copy Respondus Browser, um, and the Respondus is also something I'm going to cover in a later workshop. I'll skip the MTA certification for now, and I'll skip the reviews and exams, but I will go ahead and I'll copy over my weeks weekly modules here. And I do like to have this academic support and resources as well. OK, so I have all of that. Now, another thing I'm going to cover, and I'll cover this on Friday, is how to create tests and um, pools. And since I create my own tests and pools using Blackboard, I want to copy that over too, because I want all my test questions to copy over into the new um, course. OK? And that's about it. That's all I'm going to choose for now. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. 
And again, you can only, if there's something you miss, like for instance, I eventually want to bring over this MTA certification, and that's just an informational link that I usually show at the end of the semester. So I'm not going to copy it over now, but eventually I will want to. So you can always come back here and just check on one of them and submit just one, and then that will get copied over later. So this isn't just a one-time thing. You can use this as much as you like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and submit this. Okay. And then what happens is it says the course copy action queued, and we're going to be sent an email when it's complete. It's pretty instant. You'll get that email right away. And if you don't get it right away, go ahead and go back and check your new course. It's probably going to be there. So now I'll go to my programming for analytics online course for the fall. Okay, and here's everything. Okay, so I have my course introduction, my mind tap, my respondents browser link all of my weekly modules and my academic support and resources. Okay, now I also have all this other stuff that they gave me when the shell was created. I actually don't use any of this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through these and I'm going to delete these. Okay, now if you want, you can use these if you want to make like your course introduction from one of these um tabs that's fine too I, but since i've already done it in my older course i'm just going to delete all of them okay and some of these like the discussions you can always create discussions in your weekly modules so they don't go away forever there's other ways you can create them i just don't want to do it in my main menu here Okay, so now it's pretty much similar to my summer course. Okay, so there's some things I have to adjust here. I have to add, of course, additional weeks. Uh, my course introduction I want to change because it's no longer the summer of 2020. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into my welcome item here. I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to change this to fall 2020. Okay, everything else I can keep. Uh, I do want to change this down here because this is more for the summer. There are things I do in the summer I don't necessarily do in the fall. So I'm going to give a different explanation of the course down here. Um, I also have to change the first day of class. So I'll do that after, but just note you can go in there and make those changes. Okay. All right, again, I have to do the same thing with the ultra. I'm going to change this to when the first day of class is. And then the summer I meet every day, Tuesday through Friday, and then I give them a quiz on Mondays, but uh, I have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule in the fall. So I have to change some of this as well. But, and of course I have to update the syllabus. Now what's gonna happen is when you copy over your course, it's going to copy over all the links. And if it's a file inside of Blackboard, then it's going to keep it. So if I click on my syllabus, for example, it's still gonna show my, my summer syllabus. So what I'm going to need to do is I can either delete it and create a new one, or I could just go to edit and then click select a different file. And then um, it'll bring up, if I do browse my computer, it'll bring up my um, file manager. And then I just select the new, um, the new syllabus from here. Okay. Now my new syllabus isn't exactly ready. So uh, I'm not going to do anything with it now. I'm just going to cancel and I'll keep the old one and I'll update it when it is ready. Okay. Now, again, the syllabus links to a file and whenever you upload a file, it does get uploaded to Blackboard and to the course. So since I copied over the course, it copied over all the files. Um, but if I go to MindTap, okay, this has a link to my summer course in MindTap. The link is still there. Okay, now this isn't only for MindTap. This is also if you use MyLab or McGraw-Hill or anything else that you're integrating with Blackboard. It'll copy over the link, but when I click on this link, um, basically it's going to go into Cengage, and Cengage is going to say, hey, I don't see this course. It's not linked to your Blackboard shell. 
And the reason is because it was linked to my summer show. It's not linked to my fall show. So it gives me the option to go ahead and create a new course in MindTap that I want to integrate it with. Okay. So I'm going to cancel this because I'm going to create the MindTap course another way. I'm going to do it through MindTap and not through Blackboard. So I'm going to cancel this for now and close the tab. Okay. And I'm going to show now how we can, how we can integrate um, our learning uh, online learning platform. Okay. So again, what I do is I go through MindTap to do that because what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a master course. And then from the master course, I create the section course. Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, Cengage.com. Now, what I'm going to show here is how to integrate a MindTap course. But again, it's very similar if you're doing my lab from Pearson or McGraw-Hill or any other publisher that may have the tools available in Blackboard to integrate with. Okay, so I'm going to say sign in. Okay, and I'm going to log in here. Okay, and this is my dashboard for um, Cengage. These are all the books that I use. And the one that I want to use for this course is my Python book here. And you can see it has the summer master as well as the summer course. It has a little chain icon to the left or link icon to the left of the course name. That's just saying that this is linked to my shell in Blackboard in the summer. Okay. So what I want to do is if you notice, I have a summer master. I want to create a fall master. So I'm going to say create course and masters and section. Again, this is only if you use Cengage. If you don't use Cengage, this wouldn't apply to you. But I'm going to go ahead and create my master. And I'm going to copy from my courses. So this is similar to what I did in Blackboard. When I, when I, create, when I created the Blackboard course for the fall of um, 2020 for my programming for analytics, I copied it from my summer. I want to do the same thing here for my MindTap course. So I'm going to say copy from my courses and I'm going to select the summer course for 300. Okay. I am not going to copy it from the master. I'm actually going to copy it from the section. The reason is because the master I usually don't touch unless um, I'm like experimenting with certain things. And if I ever want to make changes, I always make it in the section course. So now I want to start my new master from the old section. So I'm going to click on this, hit continue. Okay, and the name of the course is BSAN 300. You can call this whatever you want. Fall 2020 master. Okay, the start date for the master, since the students aren't using this, it could be whatever you want to call it. Uh, whatever start date you want. Okay, so I'm going to just keep it as 518, which is, um, oh, I guess that was the start date for the summers, but that's okay. I'm going to keep it that way. And then the end date, I'm just going to make the end of the year. Okay, Eastern time zone, creating master. Okay, and it's pretty quick, by the way. Uh, if you use MindTap, I know my lab takes could take like an hour. Um, MindTap is is instant. So I'm going to go back to my resource center, and now here my 300 fall of 2020. Okay, notice I do not have a section of it yet. I only have the master, but I'm going to click in the master just to make sure everything copied over okay. I'm going to skip the guided setup. OK. And it did. Here it is. OK. So these are the chapters, uh, units that I cover. And what I'm going to do now is close out of it. OK. 
Okay, so now what I can do is I can either click on this summer, summer, summer 2020 link and link it to my new one, or I can just go ahead and do a new link in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to delete this one and I'm going to do a new one. Now, whenever you create a link in Blackboard that links to your online learning platform, you're going to do it the same way that I'm doing it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a link that links to the course itself. But when I want to link to individual assignments, I'm going to do it in a way as I'm about to show you here. OK, so you go to tools and I'm going to click on Cengage Learning Mind Link. OK, now this is, by the way, is just uh, I know I copied it over, but all this is it's just a content area. OK, so if you're starting from scratch, you just go up to the plus sign here and you go to content area and it will create a, a, a page just like this that's blank. OK, so this is a content area I call MindTap. And I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm going to click on Cengage Learning Mind Links. If you use My Lab for Pearson, you'd, you would click Pearson My Lab. If you use McGraw-Hill, uh, you would choose McGraw-Hill. OK, there's also Wiley Plus. So if you use Wiley, right? So they're all right here. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this. OK. Then what's going to happen is it's going to bring up all the courses that are available in MindTap. And these aren't just my courses. This is everyone's course, uh, every, oh, the textbooks that everyone uses across Stetson. OK, now the thing is, if you do use Cengage and if you'd like to integrate it with Blackboard and your book isn't here, then you have to contact Cengage to let them know that you would like to book added to Blackboard so you can integrate it, OK? So these are all the textbooks that are being used from Cengage, right? And the one that I'm using is further down here, is right here. OK, this is my Python book. I'm going to say link to course. OK, and then it's going to come up with this create course in MindTap. This is the same screen I saw when I clicked on my summer link. It brought me to this. So whether you're updating an old link like I showed before or if you're creating a new link like I'm doing now, it's going to take you to this screen. And I'm going to say copy from my existing course. OK, and I'm going to choose that master course that I just created. So what it's doing is it's taking all of the courses that I have here in MindTap and it's bringing it in and saying, OK, which which one do you want to copy from? And I want to copy from the master. OK. So the course name, I'll call it BSAN 300 Fall of 2020. Okay, now, this is not the master, so I'm just going to leave it like that. OK. The course start date. OK, so if you use, now if I've only used Pearson and MindTap, OK, I've used Pearson My Lab, I use MindTap from Cengage. And I've realized that for Pearson, if you use Pearson, and, and I don't know about the others, but if you use Pearson, the start date could be today. As a matter of fact, if you don't choose today for Pearson, you can't get into the course until it's ready. At least that was my experience. So you want to choose today for the start date. If you're using Cengage, the start date can be the date that your course actually begins. And you actually want to do that for MindTap because I realized uh, over time that um, students get a free one week or it could be a two week trial of the course. So if they're not ready to purchase it on the first day of class, they get two weeks that they can use for free before they have to purchase it. And it's always two weeks from the start date. It is not two weeks from when they log in. If you if you use Pearson My Lab, it's two weeks from when they log in the first time. But in Cengage MindTap, it's two weeks from the start date. So I always choose the first day of class for the start date here. And unlike Pearson, you can still get into the course even though the first day of class will be in August, okay? So my first day of class on Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule will be August the 14th. And then the end date could just be, I usually just choose the end of the year. 
This can be anything, okay? Um, they have a checkbox here. This is copy all activity dates from the course. I don't do that because I don't want the summer dates. I want to create new dates of my activities. So I'm not gonna check that. I also leave these blank because they're not required, but the time zone is required. So I'll go ahead and make this the Eastern time zone. Okay. And I will hit continue. Okay, this is the next screen that comes up. It basically says I want to synchronize the overall course score. Choose this if you use the um, if you use the gradebook in MindTap. And then this way, what it does is it just shows the, the average score in Blackboard. Now, I use the gradebook in Blackboard. So what I want to do is I want to synchronize the individual activity scores. Um, you can always change this after. So if you choose the wrong one now, it's not a big deal. You can just easily change it afterwards. Okay, so I hit continue. Okay, the import is completed. Okay, here it is. I'll hit submit now. Okay, so here's the link to the course. Now, actually, if I go into um, MindTap, and I may need to log back in. Yeah, I do. Okay, so to see it here, I'm gonna have to log out and then log back in. So let me sign out. And I'll sign back in. Okay, and here it is, fall 2020. Now, the nice thing is because I have a link here in Blackboard, the students never even have to log into MindTap. It is a single sign-in. So once they log into, because I linked the course with MindTap, once they log into Blackboard and they click on this link, it will always take them to their course in MindTap. Okay, so if you're using a bunch of different tools, and I use a couple in this class, the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to integrate them all into Blackboard. Do not have the students have three or four to five different logins to all these different systems. Have them come to one place. And as long as you can integrate the tool into Blackboard, they will not have to log in to five different systems. They just click the link, it'll bring them right into it. The nice thing also about MindTap is I just linked a course here, right? This is linking to a, to a Python course. If I wanted to, let's say, grab another assignment from another course, like for instance, there is also, on this again, okay. There's also a, um, a Pyth another Python book here. I may want some assignments from this book too. You can also link this course if you'd like to. You can link multiple courses. That's, what, that's one thing you can't do with Pearson. So in my lab, you can only link a single course. With MindTap from Cengage, you can link multiple courses. And this really comes in handy if you're doing like cross disciplines, like, like we recently started doing the business school. So for example, I'm, I'll be teaching foundations in technology and marketing. So there may be some marketing material that I want that I use from the marketing book. And there may be some um, MIS materials that I'd like that I can select from the MIS book. And if you have deep links in Blackboard and you're just putting the links to the assignment, you're not confusing the student by saying, OK, we're going to work in the marketing one today and we're going to be working in this one tomorrow. No, just put all the links right there in Blackboard and they just click the links and they don't know even which one they're going to. They're just being shown the assignment. And you can also link the chapters in the book and things like that. So, so it's pretty convenient uh, the way they have it set up here. Okay, so I'm gonna click in this link now. And um, this is what the student's going to see too. So basically on the first day of school, uh, first day of class, I'm gonna say, click on the link. It's gonna bring you to MindTap. Now they are not gonna go directly into the course. It's gonna bring them to like a registration screen. And they can either say, just give me the two week trial, I'm not ready to purchase, or they can purchase it right then and there online. Okay. So here's the class here. Okay. And there's nothing stopping them if they wanted to actually come into 
MindTap, log into MindTap and click on the exercises right from MindTap, they can do that too. But I think most students uh, like just going to one place and using the links in Blackboard. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can link individual assignments. So this is a link just to the course, uh, course itself. Okay. But if I want to link the assignments, so for instance, I'll go into week one. And in week one, what I did was I, um, okay, so I have different deep links here. So I have links to the objectives. Um, uh, I should have went back. Let me go back into the course just so I can show you what I'm linking here. So again, this following that ULIT template I told you about, what ULIT suggests to do is for each week, give the objectives, show what the readings are, show any slides if you have any, maybe have some links to some in-class assignments, homework links, quiz links, right? So I have all of that right here. Now you can write out all the objectives if you like, but the nice thing uh, about at least this book anyway, not all books do this, is if you go to the read folder, it has a preview, which has all the learning objectives there, and then it has the actual chapter. So what I do is, um, now this is in the summer, so I, I cover two chapters in one week in the summer, but if we click on this, it will bring me to the page that has all the learning objectives for chapter one. Right, which again, it's just that unit one preview. So I guess this just saved me some time. I mean, you could of course copy and paste if you use the objectives from the textbook, that's one way of doing it. Or you can just have a link if, if, the, if the learning platform provides that. Okay, then I also have uh, the reading here so they could click on this link and it opens up right to the reading. Okay. So, so notice, this is the nice thing. Notice that these links were actually linked to my old course from the summer, but because I updated the course that I linked to it uh, from MindTap, it's now linking to the book in my new MindTap course. So I didn't have to change these links at all, okay? So in the summer, this linked to the summer MindTap class, but now in the fall, it's linking to my fall class. So that's pretty nice. The downside is for my assignments, okay, these will link to, but they do not go into the gradebook. So the links will copy over, and as long as you connect it to a MindTap course, the links will work. So if I click on exercise 1.1, for example, it's going to open that inside of Cengage. Okay, so this is great, this is exactly what I needed to do. But the downside is um, I'm not going to have an entry for this in my grade book. Okay, now this is an in-class exercise. Let me go to a homework. Right, so exercise one six, this is something I would give for homework. Um, if I go into my grade center here and go to my grade book, um, notice that is not there. So that's one of the downsides. It's not going to copy over the assignment from the grade book. So because of that, what I'm gonna need to do, and this is gonna take some time, unfortunately, but I'm gonna have to delete it and reestablish that link, okay? I don't think there's any way to actually say, link this to the new grade book, okay? So I'm gonna delete this for now. And I'm going to go ahead and now add exercise 1.6 again. And I'm going to use this Cengage Learning Mind Link. This is the same thing I used when I created the course in MindTap and I linked the actual course to MindTap. So I click on that. Okay. And oh, this is interesting. It shouldn't. Oh, okay. I see. So remember, I told you you can have multiple books in the class. That's why I came to this screen. Notice it says select content here. If I actually also linked it to, let's say, this book down here, this would also say select content. So I can go into either one and select assignments from those courses. But this one, I only linked to this one course. So I'm gonna select content. And this is all of my assignments, exactly how it looks in MindTap. 
Okay. And the one I want to copy over now is exercise 1-6. Okay, so I'm going to click on this. Okay. Now, notice when I click on the checkbox under Add to Course, this is going to add the link. But then also, there's another checkbox right to the right of it that says Add to Gradebook. So this is why I have to reestablish the link because I want to put this in my grade book. So when they get a grade in MindTap, it will copy over to my grade book in Blackboard. Okay, so, I'm, uh, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and say confirm. Okay, hit submit here. Okay, so it put it down here, but you can drag it and bring it up if you want. Okay, so now it looks exactly like it did before, except if I go to my grade center, I now have exercise 1.6 here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do that with a couple others. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I'm going to delete 1.7. And I'm going to delete 2.6. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and add those back. Okay, so that was 1.7. I want to make sure this is checked. Notice all of them do not have the Add to Gradebook checkbox. This is because these exercises are exercises that I like to do in class. And um, they are, quote unquote, practice exercises. So they're not graded. Now, I do grade them, but I grade them a different way. And I'm going to go over that next next workshop. But um, but the ones that I have in MindTap that are not non-practice exercises, I can add to the gradebook. So that's one seven. I think the other one was two six. Okay, so I'm going to add those. Confirm. And you could do multiples at a time. So I'm only doing one by one because I'm demonstrating it. Okay, so here they are. And then if I go to my grade center, here they are. So these are the three homework assignments. Okay, so that's it. So now, by the way, when they get a grade in MindTap, it will instantaneously be sent to the Blackboard um, gradebook. There is a gradebook in MindTap too. Um, from my experience, I don't like the MindTap gradebook. I don't like the MyLab, Pearson MyLab gradebook. I like the Blackboard gradebook. So I always tell my students, you know, don't worry about the gradebook in MindTap. The gradebook in Blackboard is what you really need to look at. This is where I'm going to show the averages and um, for for each of um, each of the items in my in my gradebook. And I'm going to show also the course average here as well. Okay, so now for the remaining time, uh, 10 minutes or so, what I want to do is focus on the gradebook. And I want to show you how I um, create my average columns for, you know, so, so basically what I do is, and, and I'll, I'll go to my syllabus so you can see uh, how I have it set up. Let me go back to my course introduction, my syllabus. Okay. So this is my grading scale here. And, and what I do is um, I have like in-class assignments, which is assignments that they do uh, in class and we review it in class. And um, so, so I give a little uh, lecture on the new concepts and then they do a little assignment on their own. And it's sort of like an attendance. Um, they only get graded on it if they're in class. If they miss class, they don't get the credit. Um, they can always go back and watch the lecture. And it is available in MindTap if they want to work on it, but they just can't submit it for credit. Uh, but it's 10%. So, you know, a student can get sick here or there, miss class, and it's not going to make or break their grade. Um, so that's the in-class assignments. And then I give basically 30 across the board for homework, quizzes, and exams. Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a column called the homework average column. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want the homework average to include all the homework assignments. And as you can see here, I only have three homework assignments. I, I don't have all of them, um, but 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a category of assignments called homework. And if you go into the manage tab in your grade, grade center and you go to categories, okay, these are all the categories that are built into Blackboard. Okay, it doesn't have one called called homework. Okay, so I want to create a category called homework. Now, by default, all of the cat every assignment you create is going to go under assignment. I think if you create a test, which I'll show next next workshop, it will go under test. But any other assignment, especially those that are coming from your learning management system, are going to go under assignment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a category. I'm going to call it homework. Click submit. Okay, so here it is here. I'm going to click OK. Okay. Now when I want to assign it to the homework category, I'm going to go to manage column organization. Okay. All right. So here are my three assignments here. Okay. Now I want them to be homework. I don't want them to be assignments. So I'm going to check on them all. Okay. And I'm going to say change category to homework. It will change it and I'm going to hit submit. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new column and I'm going to create an average column. And I'm going to call this homework average. Okay. And I want to display it as a percentage. That's fine. And where it says include an average, I'm going to say selected column from categories. Okay. And now I'm going to select homework down here. So what's nice is by doing it this way, oops, I clicked this arrow down here. By doing it this way, it's nice for a couple of reasons. One is I never have to touch this again. All I need to do is just when I bring in assignments, assign them as homework category, and they will automatically be averaged in with the category of homework. Another thing is I will tell students that the lowest homework grade gets dropped, right? So what I do now, I don't do this at the beginning of the semester. I always do this at the end because it kind of gives them a little nice surprise at the end when they see their, their average went up a point or two, right? Because I dropped the lowest. But what I do is at the end of the semester, I come in here and you can do it at the beginning. It's all how you want to do it. And you should say drop one lowest grade and it will drop the lowest grade in this average. Okay, so anyway, this is why I like to use the category. And then we hit submit. Okay, so now we have a homework average at the end. So as they do these assignments, they can see how it calculates in, their, in the homework average. And then what I do is I create a course average. Now the course average is weighted, right? And I'd like it to match what I just showed in the syllabus. So I make this a weighted column. And I call this course average. OK, and then when I have now, for instance, I just started this. So all I have is one homework category, but I'm also going to create an in class assignment category. I'm going to create a quiz category. Right. And then I just copy, uh, bring all these over. OK. And then here is where I can say, OK, I want to make this, um, you know, um, the homework I said was 30 percent of the average. Okay, so then when I, you know, and then I could bring in my quizzes and say, okay, that 30% and my exams, I'll make that 30%, right? And eventually it's gonna get up to 100%. And then I click submit, right? And it looks like you could even drop it here if you wanted to. So if you didn't have a homework average like I did, and if you just wanted to drop it in your uh, course average uh, area, you can do that too. Yeah, hit submit. It's going to tell me it doesn't weigh up to 100%, but that's okay for now. So I'll click OK. Okay, and now I have my course average at the end here. Now, notice there are two columns that they gave us automatically, weighted total and total. Um, these use a point system and not a percentage system, so they don't work for me. So what I do is I just go ahead and I delete it. Don't need to wait it um, total. And the total here, you'll notice that has a green checkbox. That means it's the external grade. In other words, this is the grade that the student sees when they log into Blackboard. And it, so when they log into Blackboard, they go into the course, they see this grade as their average. 
Okay, since I'm going to get rid of this, I'm going to come over here to course average and I'm going to make this the um, external grade. Here it is set as external grade. So this will get the green checkbox and I'm going to get rid of this one. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Um, now, again, I didn't go into the in-class assignments yet. Uh, but the in-class assignments, at least for this class, is the same as the homework. Uh, but what I do is for in-class is I create a Blackboard assignment so students can submit their in-class through Blackboard. Okay, so for homework, they just do it in my tap. The, the grade gets copied over. But for my in-class assignments, for my quizzes and exams, I do all of those through Blackboard. So next class, what I will, uh, next workshop, what I'm going to do, and this will be on Friday, I'll go over how I create my Blackboard assignments. So how I create my assessments in Blackboard and how I create my quizzes and exams, okay? And by the way, whenever you create an assessment or quiz or exam in Blackboard, it will automatically be uh, entered into the grade book. Okay. So, um, so that's it, it's only a couple I went 45 minutes, which is what I was hoping to do. Uh, but I know there's a lot of questions, so I want to go back. And maybe you have suggestions. Maybe you do things in a better way than I showed, and I'm, I'm open to that, too. So um, let's go back and take a look here. Now, Chris, I know you were monitoring the, the questions. Okay, so let's see the one here. Uh, okay, the so one, how, oh, go ahead. Okay, and so it says, how do you create customized tabs? If you haven't done so in the past, right? I usually put everything under content, but we for, for course intro and break it apart by weeks if possible. Okay, so I'll, sh I'll show you how to do that. Now, another thing I should have mentioned, I forgot. Um, if you bring over other tabs, like I did from another course, or even if you create your own. So if you created your own course introduction, and what happens is, when the student logs into Blackboard, this may not be the page that they see. So another thing you're going to want to do, if you create a course introduction page or any page that you want to show up first when the student enters, you have to go into the customization dropdown under course management. Okay, unfortunately, this is not very intuitive, but it's under customization teaching style. Okay, and then you want to come down here where it says entry point. This is the first area users will see when they enter the course. Mine is already course introduction because I copied it over from a previous course which had that as the entry point. But if you're creating a new tab, which is what I'm about to show, make sure you do come into customization teaching style, select course introduction as the entry point, and then submit it so when the student logs into Blackboard, this is the first page that they see, okay? So if we want to create a new content area, and again, I just copied them all over, but if I wanted to do a new one, I just come up here to where the plus sign above the um, title of the course where there's the plus sign, I go to content area, and then you name it whatever you want, right? So you can name it course introduction, and I'll just call it temp, temp area. And you could make it available to users if you're ready to, or if you're working on it and you want to make it available later, just hit submit. This will give you a blank content page, and then you can add whatever tool you want, right? So if you have other uh, online learning platforms that you use, you could go ahead and select it from here. Some things you have to be a little careful about. For instance, they have a Blackboard Collaborate link. And when I first started to create these weekly modules, I said, oh, this is great. I'm gonna cover Blackboard Collaborate too. I think I'll do that in the third or fourth session. But I said, oh, great, I can put a Blackboard Collaborate link in my weeks, weekly modules. So the student can click on the week and then click on the Collaborate link. The problem is this Blackboard Collaborate is the old one. It is not Collaborate Ultra. Okay, so be careful about that. Collaborate Ultra only allows you to put in a link in the, in, uh, they don't allow you to put it in the weekly module. You have to create a separate link uh, on the side, which is what I do. And I'll show how to do that. Uh, in a later workshop. But for now, you can put your assignments here. Um, if you just want like an announcement, you can put an item. If you have a file you want the class to download, you can select file. 
And then also you can do your assessments as well. And you just put them right here in this one. And then when you're ready for the class to see it, you just click on the drop down and you say show link. And now everyone can see this link. Okay. If you have multiple sections in the same course, do you copy your summer in, make all the changes to due date, syllabus, fall, fall, and update fall, the rest of your section? Okay, I was thinking, am I making less edits for me? Yeah. So what you can do then is, I mean, unfortunately, if you have multiple sections, there's no way to really easily cut down the work, at least that I'm aware of. So what you could do is you can go to um, you can create a course master like I did and then create each of your sections from the master. But then you'll have to go into each section and update the dates of your courses, uh, update the dates of your assignments. I'm sorry. Um, so one of the ways you could do it is you can make the master like let's say you're teaching the course at nine. Um, you could you can make the master your nine o'clock class and you could go ahead and just uh, create all of the start and end dates using the dates and the nine o'clock hour for those assignments. And then build the first section of nine o'clock from the master, then build the second section from the master, right? Which will have the nine o'clock assignment dates in it. But then it makes it a little bit easier to go in and just say, okay, I'm going to change these to 10 o'clock because I'm teaching section two at 10 o'clock. Um, that makes it a little easier if you have the dates in there already and you're just updating dates rather than having to go into your nine o'clock class and say, okay, let's set the due date from here to here and then go to your 10 o'clock class and say, okay, let's set the due date again from here to here. Um, that's the only way I know that really cuts down on that time. So, um, yeah, I know that's not the best answer. Maybe there's a better way, but that's that's how I do it when I have multiple sections. Okay. Uh, I'll read the next question. Okay. The next question, yeah, go, go. Uh, Dr. Lynch, Dr. I believe Key uh, asked kind of the same thing, but is there an easy way to copy courses between instructors? Um, specifically, it seems that this is for a uh, first timer um, to people to a course that maybe another professor has already mm -hmm. created much of that content. Yeah. So I can show you how to do that, at least in Cengage, uh, if you use MindTap. But I, I think, again, my lab, I think, is very similar. So what you need to do is go into your uh, dashboard, okay, where you have all of your uh, master courses here. Okay, here we go. So. What I can do is I can go to, um, let's see, I want to say it's Manage Courses. So I'm going to click on Manage Courses. I'm going to go to my Course Masters. Now, here is the one I just created, BSAN 300 Fall 2020. And I'm going to click the Edit button. Okay. And oh, I thought it was here. Hmm. Okay, let me cancel it. There is a part, a place where when I was creating the course where you can actually hit a checkbox that says make this available for other instructors. Uh, maybe it is, no, I thought it was under manage. Okay, let me go to the section. Maybe it's here. Okay, add additional instructor or TA. You can add an additional instructor, but this will make the instructor, and if, also if you have a TA, this will allow them to access the course, but not copy it. Um, okay, so I may have missed that step when I created it, but basically when you create the course master, there is an option that says allow, um, let's see if I go to here again, create course master, and let's say I say new. Yeah, I'll have to look into, I, I know there's a way. There's a way that you can check it and say, okay, allow instructors to copy this. And then what happens is when you create a course section, so when I say create course, you can copy from another instructor's course. Oh, these are course key. Okay, I'm sorry, I may be confusing my, 
I may be confusing my um, platforms. Okay, so copy from another instructor's course. It uses a course key. Okay, that makes it easier. Okay, so then what you want to do is go to manage courses again. Okay, so I'm going to go to course master. And here's the one I just created. So I click on course key. Here's the course key. So you give this to your colleague. And then when they go to create a course, they say copy from an existing course, another instructor's course. They put in this course key. And then now we'll create the course for them. So that's how, that's how that works. OK. Um, is there a way to consolidate the columns in a grade book? Some professors have way too much, too many to manage. Well, yeah, so I don't know what you mean by consolidate. Basically, there's a separate column for each, for each um, assignment. Now, what I do is I go through a lot of um, questions in class. And that's why what I was saying before, I actually create a Blackboard assignment for each class rather than for each question that I do in class. And I do that to kind of make it less columns. So in other words, if I'm doing five questions in an in-class for, for in class, okay, and they're small programs, let's say, we, we're going through these. What I do is I create a Blackboard assignment, which is one question in it, which is just an essay where they can copy over their code. And I say, okay, everyone copy over your code um, uh, into this Blackboard assignment and then submit it. And then what happens is I go into my gradebook and I have only one column for those five programs because they just copied all their code into one assignment. So that's the best way that, that I could really, that I do it. Um, and then there's only one column for several assignments. But if you are linking to assignments from MindTap, like I just showed, and you have, let's say I have five homework assignments, yeah, it will create five columns in the Blackboard gradebook. There's really no way around that. There's no way to combine those columns. You know, and again, this is to the best of my knowledge. Um, maybe others have found ways to do it, but, but I haven't. And is that it for questions? OK, let's see. Is that it, Chris? Okay. Um, oh, okay. Sure. I, I wanted, um, maybe I can, Heather, I think left. I was going to ask Heather because she uses McGraw Hill, how to do the connect integration. So hopefully uh, maybe she'll show up to the next one and, and she can show that. Um, cause I know a lot of professors use McGraw Hill. Um, one other thing I'd like to show and that is, um, now again, not all professors like to be as transparent with the grade book, understand why. But if you wanted to show the grade book, and I do do this for better or for worse, um, if you create a course link, you can actually browse to, actually it's not a course link, I'm sorry. I think it's a tool link. A tool link, you can go to the grade book and it shows as my grades here and you can create um, a link called Gradebook and make it available to users. Okay. And I just put it right up here under the course introduction. So a student can click on the Gradebook and they can see all their grades. Again, this, this is if you want to do it or not. Um, I know this sometimes could lead to a lot of disputes, especially if you do have a learning management system that you're linking to, because I did say that it's instant, but I know with Pearson, it's not so instant. Sometimes it takes maybe an hour to update, refresh the grades, and you'll get students saying, oh, I don't see my, or I got a zero, and I was in class, and whatever. So you may, may have to be a little careful with this if you're going to be as transparent with the grades when it comes to um, um, synchronizing with, with a learning management system. So. OK, 
Okay, and there may be one other question here. Okay, whoops. Once you're done, I want to show them all. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, if there's no other questions, that's it. So thanks. And I'll have the next workshop on Friday at 10. And then, Chris, you can go ahead and, and um, show what you need to show. Let me stop my screen sharing. Yeah. Uh, so, and I need to remember how to do screen sharing with this. <laughs> Excuse me one second. Do you want me to stop the recording here, um, Chris? Or? Okay. Um, 